फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट सर वी हैव जस्ट हियर द ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर फॉर रिवेन्यू एंड सिविल एक्सपेंडिचर टेल अस द सरकमस्टांसिस इन विच दिस बिल हैज कम बिफोर दिस हाउस He has also told us that it is one of the very important items of revenue, so far as the states are concerned. Till the other day, we had Part B states in our country, and those states used to levy internal customs duties. But after first April nineteen fifty-five, under the Constitution, those Part B states. which used to levy customs duties were barred and instead the alternative revenue for the laws they sustained by giving up customs duties under the constitution was the sales tax i can say from my personal experience that as far as rajasthan was concerned when we gave up the customs duties we were very much afraid about ways and means of filling up the gap but it was a matter of satisfaction that during the course of a year or two by levying this sales tax we were to a very great extent able to make up that loss which we had sustained by giving up the customs duties till the constitution 6th amendment act was passed the central government had no powers in regard to the passing of laws for the levy of taxes on interstate transactions but after that act was passed powers were assumed and now it is good that the government have come forward with the formulation of certain principles which would guide the imposition of taxes on interstate trade under the last amendment of the constitution government have taken power to define as to what will be an interstate transaction and also to prescribe the rates of sales tax to be levied on such transactions the bill provides that in the case of certain important items the state governments can impose a sales tax of 2% and not more while on transactions between registered dealers there would be a uniform levy of 1% this is what the honorable minister said and that is what has been provided for in the bill before us one anomaly that we are seeing is that the tax varies from state to state before november 1956 punjab had a sales tax whereas we in rajasthan did not have this tax for a long time sir the repeal of the essential goods declaration and regulation of tax on sale or purchase act 1952 would mean that articles which are not liable to taxation will be taxed now the honorable minister mentioned about the repeal of this act and further mentioned a number of articles which were essential but under clause 14 of the bill before us there are only six items which have been declared as articles of special importance for purposes of interstate trade or commerce the state governments are expected to raise their revenues to meet their expanding expenditure the honorable minister has just now said that they are the representatives of the people and that they themselves would see that they do not levy heavy taxes as otherwise they will become unpopular in their own constituencies and with the people who elected them sir i would like the honorable minister to look into the proceedings of the rajasthan assembly for the last 2 years in a hurry to raise more money they had passed certain bills imposing tax on the sale of certain articles 
an agitation took place and they had to change the laws they added certain more items and then again an agitation took place resulting in those items having to be dropped again if we look into the proceedings of the rajasthan assembly for the last 2 years we would find that the original act had been changed so much in the course of this period that it would be very difficult to recognize the original one so long as there is a one party government in this country this sort of argument would not carry weight when there are two parties equally balanced then this argument would count but in the present circumstances this argument will not count i would like in this connection to know from the honorable minister as to whether government have got power to add any items to the list included in clause 14 if they consider that certain states are levying a heavy sales tax on them without of course amending this bill if they have not got such powers then this will naturally go against the interests of the people lastly i come to the question of food grains the honorable minister referred to the various meetings that seemed to have taken place between the various finance ministers and between the various chief ministers of states they were very adamant that these items in clause 14 should not be expended i would submit that the argument which has been given by the honorable minister is not convincing stop